guys, I'm Christina from BeCoolHomeschool.com. If you have not checked out my blog, feel free to go over there and check it out. I'm doing a collaboration with Abby from Rooted and Rest. And then I um, she is pairing up with the Wild Walk Way. This month they're talking about the summer learning plans. So I'm going to tell you kind of about a little bit about us and what our summer learning plans are. So stay tuned. I have a few things that we do to make summer vacation summer vacation. We kind of do homeschooling all year long, but I do try to make sure I take at least one month completely off. But by completely, we still do some learning activities. Now we're going to take the month of June off. If we get finished early enough, we could technically be done a third week of May and we'll have all of our 180 days in that we need to be in. That's if we work extra hard to get those days in um, in our curriculum. All right, so a few things that we're going to do this summer is, first off, we are going to celebrate that it is summer. My son hates reading and does not like doing his schoolwork. He'll do math, he'll do science, social studies, history, but for some reason, when it's time to do reading, he does not want anything to do with it. So we are going to celebrate summer vacation. We always celebrate the first day of school, but this year we are gonna go all out for summer vacation. Our church always does like an end of the year school bash. They're gonna have a big water day at our church this year for the end of the year school year day. So I don't plan on doing like a big party or anything, but we do plan on making the last day fun. I'm hoping that we will have no schoolwork that day. I hope to take a picture of my children on the last day of school so that I can compare it to their first day of school for this year. Some fun outdoor activities, probably some water games, and then maybe a few other activities. So the next thing that we plan on doing this summer is instead of having worksheets, sometimes we do summer bridge type activities or worksheets, but this year I feel like my son, my seven year old just needs time off. So we are strictly gonna take time off. If we do any activities at all, we plan to do additional games. So we will be playing several different types of games and I'll show you some of those to practice math skills, telling time, counting money, addition, subtraction, multiplication, Skip counting, we'll be listening to a lot of songs to learn how to skip count because I know multiplication comes in third grade and so he's already got the gist of it and understands it for the most part. So now we're just working on skip counting to make sure that when we do start working multiplication, he'll be able to just have memorized. So yeah, so we'll do a lot of different type of educational games with that. I'm hoping to do some um, sight word games to help keep sight words fresh. We have a fun little fishing game, which I will show you guys here in a minute. And then we also plan to do different little games. So I will have a one that we decided to do two years of kindergarten with because she was an August birthday. So we'll have our second year of kindergarten next year. So I'll make sure sight words and different letters, that letter sounds, all that stays fresh with her. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the activities that we're gonna do this summer. We are still taking a month off. However, during that month, I plan to let them pick what they do. So I'm going to start right here with some of our favorite Usborne books. I used to sell Usborne and now I just like to support people that do because we love them so much. These three will be in a the writing basket. I plan to have it for each subject area that we're going to study this summer that's just going to be for fun and they can pick out of that basket what they want to do. So for writing, these are the three writing books they can choose as well as Night Zookeeper. And I'm just going to show you kind of a flip through so you can kind of see the different things that are in these for them to do. So he loves to read comics, so there will be a little bit of reading in this, even though it'll be in the writing tub, so he can practice reading still. My first story writing book.
Write your own scripts is our last one. I'm gonna switch over to the handwriting for my kindergartners. And I have several of these because there's two of them that'll be using them. So these are some more cards that they can practice writing the words, sounding it out, tracing, as well as ending sounds. And then some of them actually have beginning sounds as well. You can see the difference between those. And then we also have in there these Usborne cards. Again, they can sound out the word, practice writing it and tracing it, as well as on the back they have writing and tracing. So those were the My First Word cards from Usborne. And I'm not sure where these ones came from. We've had them for a while. And then we also have practice just learning to write your letters. And then I love that these, you can tell they've already started drawing in them. But they have areas that they can trace as well as tracing the letters. This is the Grammar and Punctuation Wipe Clean book. I have this in there for my second grader, but I'm sure the kindergartners might be able to use it as well. Then I also have the Cursive Writing one, since he'll start Cursive Writing next year. I went ahead and ordered that one for him to put in the, his summer basket so that he can practice Cursive Writing and kind of get a head start on that. Okay, so now we have math. So this will all be in our math tub. We will have our first math. Most of these are kindergarten base, just practicing kindergarten math skills so that they can continue learning that. And we have this one that's practice handwriting for all those backward numbers they write. I'm hoping that they trace them enough this summer they'll learn how to write them correctly. And then, okay, this one is number fun, write and reuse. This one's a little bit more skill-based rather than just tracing. So I like, you know, they have to color in six bananas, seven apples. This one is mostly for my second grader. However, I think kindergartners could probably do the first couple pages since they have been practicing the beginning steps of telling time. I have our science history types of stories that are a little bit different. Again, most of them are us born. This one was given to us and it's, I'll just flip through it real quick to kind of show you what it is. Okay, moving on to these three. These will be in our science slash history basket as well. This is the Never Get Bored book. I also ordered the Never Get Bored Outside book since we are outside so often. That way if they say they're bored or they're ready to come in, I can give them the book and have them pick out an activity to do. Okay, so here's a flip through of this one though. And here is a story of inventions that they can look through and read about different inventions. And this one is Invention Scribble Book to kind of show them how to create their own inventions. Yeah. 
I also plan to rotate these into the science basket with the history also. These are all the different science books that we have that they can read if they would like instead of doing one of the other activities. So I also have a Bible basket that I plan to put out. This will be something I will read to them and I will probably take out a five minute story out of here, maybe at bedtime, maybe not. We usually watch Yippie's Daily Devotional for bedtime, but we may change it up for the summer. We may still watch those. If you don't have Yippie, it's a great app and they have devotionals every day on it other than the weekends. My son loves comic books, so I did get him a couple extra from Usborne to add to his reading basket, but I do have these in his reading basket so he can pull them out and read them during our 20 minutes of quiet reading time in the summertime. The kindergartner's reading box, we will have hooked on phonics books I use for my son. They are able to read already, and then also Bob books that were given to us. So we will allow them to read through, oops, read through those during the 20 minutes of quiet reading. This is another gym from Usborne. It's a fun little activity for them where they can count and then they put the pieces on. We call them donuts or cookies. So this one would be a donut. And so they would have to put it with the correct number. So they count it and it's four, so they lay it with the four. It is also self-correcting, which I love, so they can actually flip it over themselves and check their answers when they're all finished. So I'm just going to place these in and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so you can see here, after I flip it over, they have to line up those little holes with the pegs that are sticking up. Okay, and then they can check. So you can see that that one's right, but this one is not. So then they can check their answers and switch them around, and then find out why their answers are wrong by flipping it back over if they need to. I have several of these that go with that. So you can see reading comprehension, this is level one. Capitalization and punctuation, level two. So we all take turns practicing these blends and diagraphs. Uh, vocabulary, phonics, and nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So we will definitely be practicing these this summer. And then also we have the math ones. So addition, subtraction with three and four digit numbers, multiplication and division, which is one that we'll definitely be going over this summer to get my second grader prepped for multiplication division. Matching and early numbers, that'll be good for my kindergartner. These other ones will be kindergarten as well. Intro to algebra, intro to geometry and measurements, intro to data, and the last one is number coins and fractions. I also plan on doing lots of field trips this summer. I want to make sure, I want to make sure that we get to do exploring, get out. I know with COVID last year, we didn't get out much. So even if it's just going places outdoors, like different nature centers, different parks, at a lot of different playgrounds. If you wanna check out my kids' page, they have a series going right now where we decided this summer we are gonna visit all kinds of different playgrounds, take some overnight trips, and just visit different playgrounds and how much fun playgrounds can be, even if they're not, or they don't look as much fun. So yeah, check them out at Creative Kingdom Kids. They will have all their activities that they do on there. to do this summer is Mamaw Mondays. Uh, we tried this out when COVID first started. We went with just a couple other cousins and we decided to have Mamaw Mondays where they would go and they would do some activities and then we'd go swimming afterwards. So we hope to do that again this summer. We'll get to do some educational activities the first half of the day. Then we'll have a picnic lunch and then they'll get to swim the rest of the day and um, 
hang out over there all day. So we do plan on doing that every Monday or one day of the week. I'm not sure if it'll be on Mondays or not, but that way they'll have a fun day to get out of the house and just have somebody else teaching them, but keeping them fresh, but still not having an actual textbook with work to do. And then the last thing that we plan on doing this summer is lots of nature and exploring and getting out in the woods. It's basically we're gonna hopefully get out to do a lot of field trips to do that. But if not, we do live out in the country where we have lots of trees that they can go exploring. Uh, we've been doing a lot of different activities already this uh, spring. And so we just kind of want to expand on that and just let them be kids. Let them make bridges over creeks and build little tree houses if they can or build teepees with sticks, whatever it may be. I just want them to be outside learning how to do things outside with their hands, um, hunting, fishing, and just enjoying that as much as possible. Check out some of the creative activities we are doing on Creative Kingdom Kids YouTube channel, as well as check out my blog on BeCoolHomeschool.com and real life activities on my Instagram page. Thank you for checking us out. As always, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.